Let's do it. Come on. Friends, welcome back for five more unconventional ways we save money. Scratch that. If you stay to the end, we actually have one pro bono tip. So make it six unconventional ways we save money. Granted, this isn't an all-encompassing list. Let us know in the comments below some unconventional or out-of-the-box ways you save money. Number one, we thrift everything we can. We thrift the vast majority of our clothes, the vast majority of our furniture, our appliances, our books, etc. We buy things used at yard sales, on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, at thrift stores. The sky is the limit. There's probably even more apps out there that we don't even know of. But the fact is that when you buy things used, you're getting it at a fraction of the cost that you would paying in the store retail. Number two on the list has to do with how we buy our new items. And that is on really good sales. And typically you find the really good sales at the end of the season or clearance. I personally don't like to spend more than 25% of the retail price on any given item. Hold on, are you saying 75% savings? Yes. Is that possible? <laughs> yes. For example, we recently bought some clothes from J. Crew factory store. It's a factory store, so already you're getting it at more of a discounted price. We bought the clothes on clearance, and so they were discounted again. Discounted, discounted, a discount on the discount. Yeah. And then we bought the clothes um, on a sale. The sale, it was 70% off. 70% off of the clearance price. It's and, true. <laughs> and that's how we like to shop when we are buying things brand new. I love when we hit that score. It's just like, wow, brand new. We just, where's the bag? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> My favorite store. Yeah. Just came in the mail today. So all you have to do is plan ahead. And if you didn't know, my wife is a wonderful planner when it comes to wardrobes. Check out some of the videos in the description below about... 10 item wardrobes. That's right. The third way that we wanna share is switching as many consumables to non-consumables as is convenient and possible. So for example, rather than using paper towels, use cleaning cloths. We've tried to cut out a lot of paper or plastic products. Typically you can buy them in bulk and just use them up, but at the same time, if you're never having to make those purchases and wash your dishes, your cutlery, you save money. Also switching from consumables to non-consumables is switching from consumable feminine hygiene products to non-consumable. When you think about it, services are consumable as well. You go to the manicure and you just pay for it once and it's done. You go to get your hair cut or to get a massage and you've just paid for that one time. Well, instead, you can buy products so that you can do it at home and then it becomes a non-consumable. So for example, my husband cuts his and the boy's hair. I've cut my daughter's hair. My husband's cut my hair even in the past. I'm fortunate enough to be married to a physical therapist, so I get really good massages, but you can learn to do massages probably on YouTube and give each other a massage. That takes us to our next point, number four in this video, DIYs. Do it yourself if you don't know what that stands for. And it's so true, when you do things yourself, you're cutting the cost of having to pay somebody else for their time and service. There's so many ways you can learn to do things. Blogs, YouTube. I can't count how much money I've saved by learning to do something on YouTube and fixing, whether it's appliances, the vehicles, furniture, whatever it might be, it has saved us so much money. Over the years, my husband has repaired multiple um, appliances of ours. Our cars, he's built fences and a number of things. There's just so much and you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. That's right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be repairs. I know it might sound like all of our things are falling apart, <laughs> but, but routine maintenance costs money. And if you could do it yourself, you're going to save. Do it yourself is often applied to repairing things that are broken, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Routine maintenance can be done yourself and you save so much money and in the long run when you're doing those repairs on a regular basis your things are going to last so much longer number five is fun recreation and vacations we save a lot of money on recreation and vacations because we do things for as free or cheap as possible when it comes to recreation and vacations our family really likes to keep things simple we have done a lot of camping we do a lot of hiking picnics swimming 
really anything that we can find that's inexpensively done. Having fun together doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And the bonus, the pro bono tip, number six on the final video of unconventional ways we save money is, drum roll, the spending freeze. These come on at random. By setting aside time in the calendar, whatever it might be, a few days, a week, I've heard of people doing a no spend year. We haven't gone to that extreme, but when you think about it, you save money when you're not out spending it. That's right, either of us can call a spending freeze and we'll just say we're not spending money for the rest of the month or however long it might be. And we both adhere to that and it does become fun because you need to be a little bit creative sometimes, especially you know if my husband calls in and I hadn't gone grocery shopping with the meals. And things get, um, when you get creative, I find that some really good recipes come out of it. Yeah, who doesn't like a good challenge? It's fun, you can collaborate with each other and find different ways to get around the spending freeze. Friends, if you found value in this video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, take care.